everybody, my name is Erin Moreno, and I'm from the Aspire program, and today we're going to be going over formal charges and loan pairs. So formal charges and loan pairs pretty much go hand in hand, and it's something that um, reoccurs throughout the chemistry courses. So it's a pretty good idea to get a handle on these before you start going on to harder stuff like resonance structures or like the the Newman structures. So for right now we're just going to go over um, formal charges and what formal charges are is um, it's any atom that has an abnormal amount of electrons. Alright so why don't we start with carbon because we all know carbon has four valence electrons right? So this is what a normal carbon looks like. It has zero charge. But um, sometimes you'll come across uh, carbons that have a positive charge or um, a negative charge. And what that means is that it's going to have a different um, number of electrons. So for positive charged um, carbon, you're going to have one less electron. So instead of four, you're only going to have three. And keep in mind, formal charge also affects the bonds that it can make with the other atoms. Like for instance, like the neutral one, it can make four bonds with uh, with four other atoms. But for this one, it can only make three bonds. And you understand why, right? Because uh, covalent bonds, they have to share electrons. And if you don't have any electrons to share, then you really can't make any sort of bond on that side. Now for the negatively charged carbon, it's a bit of a different story. It's going to have two uh, elect an extra electrons, so it's going to have a lone pair. So this is what you call a lone pair, right? And what lone pairs are, it's basically um, like two electrons that are stuck together and they're not going to form any other bonds. Like for these ones, they can they can have an extra electron, but for lone pairs, they're they're already full, so they don't need anything. So one of the most common ones is like oxygen. And as you know, oxygen has valence electrons of six. So these two right here are lone pairs. So they're not going to be going into any sort of bonding. But these two on this side right here, they're going to have bonds, and usually you'll see it with eight, two H's, you know, like water, but um, occasionally you will have oxygens that are going to have three bonds instead of, instead of two, two bonds. And this is where formal charge comes in because it gives you the information of, um, of how many electrons that atom has. So we're going to do a couple of examples. So for this one, it's aluminum and oxygen. And from from here, if you really don't know valence electrons, you can just go down to the periodic table. And in the periodic table, we're only going to be talking about this portion and this portion. The transition metals are a little bit trickier, so we're just going to skip them. But for, for these ones, all you have to do is um, you just knock out the, the one in each in each column. So you know how 16 is going to be 6, 7 is going to be, 17 is going to be 7, 18 is going to be 8. So this is like a little trick to figure out how many valence electrons there are in any given atom. So right now we're doing aluminum, and aluminum's right here in this column. So if you look up right here, it's, it's um, 3. So that means it's, the aluminum atom is going to have 3 valence electrons. So when you look at it, a normal aluminum is going to have three valence electrons and if you count the bonds it can make it's only going to have three bonds however the example right here it has four bonds and in order to have four bonds it's going to have it's going to need an extra electron right but since um the protons and the neutron ratio is different it's going to it's going to affect it and it's going to give it a negative charge now the same thing goes goes for this this atom. As the example that we did before, above, you already know that the oxygen is going to have a positive charge. 
And that's really because you, you know it only has two, one lone pair instead of two lone pairs like it normally does. However, sometimes you get like one of those really tricky ones and you're not sure how to go about it. So I'll quickly draw one right here. It's an oxygen double bonded to carbon. Yeah, a couple of H's. So we're trying to figure out where the formal charge is. So the first thing you can do is figure out how many valence electrons each atom is going to have. So for hydrogen, it's pretty easy. It only has one valence electron. And it's always bonding one time because that's all it needs. Carbon, do you know carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen will have six valence electrons. So from here, um, you can pretty much just count the bonds. So for carbon, you can count each line. So it's one, two, three, four. So four lines means it has four, four bonds, which means it has four electrons because they share electrons. And since we know that the neutral, the neutral portion, it, the neutral carbon only has four electrons, you already know that this one's not going to have a formal charge. So then we're going to look at um, the oxygen right here. So how many bonds does it have? One, two, three. So you know that a, a neutral oxygen is going to have two electrons. But since, I mean not two electrons, two lone pairs. But since it only has one lone pair, you know it's going to have a formal charge. So all you need to figure out is how many valence electrons it normally has. And if it if one is taken away, so for this one it's going to be like this, you know it's automatically going to be a positive. So that's pretty much um, what you need to know. Um, lone pairs will come and will become a big deal later on in like later sections in your chemistry courses but it's important to know that um, lone pairs don't make any bonds but they will affect your structures in later sections so if you need any more help you can just stop by the Aspire program or go to your nearest tutors and they'll help explain it to you. And I'll see you in another video. See ya.